Welcome to For Life and Liberty. I'm Sue Parker, and I'm here with Karen McNeil this afternoon. And we've got a couple of wonderful guests. Y'all are just not going to believe who our guests are. And we (laughs) met one of our guests kind of maybe accidentally yesterday. I think so. (laughs) I think it was in God's accident, though. Karen and I went to a lunch yesterday for an organization called um, Go TV. Well, or maybe get out the vote. Get out the vote. (laughs) Well, well, it is. Well, that says Go TV. Yeah, but anyway. (laughs) Well, anyway, we went to this lunch and we're sitting at this table and introducing ourselves. And I came up with a a gentleman sitting next to me whose name was Carl Schaefer. And he happened to be the husband of our guest, Heidi Schaefer. Hello, Heidi. Hi, good morning. It was such a wonderful (laughs) thing to come in and see smiling faces and know the people that I was going to get a chance Mm -hmm. to be on the radio with today. Mm -hmm. So thank you again so much. Oh, we were excited. And we've got Chris Thomas with us. Good morning, Chris. Chris. Hey, I'm just the guy here with the three lovely ladies just <laughs> Lucky along for you. the ride. <laughs> yeah, hold, hold what you got. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about something this morning that um, I, I, I don't really know where we're going to go with this, but we want to talk about the Memphis City Schools surrendering the charter. You know, we hear that on the news every night. And you know what? I'm not even sure I know exactly what they're talking about. So Karen and I were um, kind of having one of our car conversations. and <laughs> That's we just where we said, do our best thinking, right? Definitely. And we just said, you know what? We need to get Chris. We need to get Heidi on the radio and talk about this. So uh, Karen said she had two or three questions. So, <laughs> Well, you know, it's hard to even know what questions to ask. And uh, I did watch the Channel 3 thing debate that that uh, was on the other night and uh, a couple of questions did pop in my mind the first question that I've had all along and that was answered for me a little bit and maybe you could expound on it is why did um, David Pickler do this in the first place where he decided to um, kind of it seemed to me call the city school uh, board's bluff a little bit Well, I've been asked that, you know, last year the county school board had the legislation in place for special school district, but one of the school board, and everyone voted seven to zero to go to Nashville and everything, but then one of the county school board members went sort of around them and went to Nashville and said, we don't really want this, so then they, it got put off. Well, Chris, kind of explain where we are, what this is all about. I guess I probably jumped the gun and asked that question, but just set us up. Okay, a special school district, you know, when Memphis has annexed an area in the county, people were going to county schools, but because the city had annexed, then that would throw that in turmoil, and then after they finished that year, they would have to be part of the city schools, and so people were like, wait a minute, we wanted to be part of the county schools so people would move. And so this was a way to freeze the county school lines. Mm -hmm. It would say forever, here are going to be the school lines for the county schools, and that way we don't have to worry about if Memphis annexes or whatever. So that was what a special school district was about. And then there was some taxing authority issues in there. And so after November, in the election in November, when things changed in Nashville, I think Dave and them started talking about special school district legislation getting passed. Well, when the city schools got wind of that, let me back up, I'm sorry, consolidation. Mm -hmm. The big consolidation question overwhelmingly was rejected by the citizens of Shelby County. Mm -hmm. So then they started talking about special school district, and then the city schools saw that if that happened, if the special school district passed, the city schools would be left in a what I call a mess, for lack of a better word. And so they decided, basically, if you're going to bluff, we're going to call your bluff. And so we'll just give up our charter. This is about money. Shea Flynn admitted um, in a meeting that this they don't want to pay that $78 million mm-hmm. anymore. Okay? Mm-hmm. And so they— Now explain to our listeners what that $78 million. Oh, my goodness. Heidi, go ahead. (laughs) Actually, I I do know this part, and thank you. Just so that you all understand, I actually am a city resident, Mm -hmm. um, which means that I get the wonderful honor of being a city and a county resident. Mm -hmm. And um, so my taxes go both places. So when I pay taxes for uh, my property taxes, they go to Shelby County Schools, and they go to Memphis City Schools. And just so that you guys are clear, also in Shelby County, when you pay taxes, your county taxes also go to county schools and Memphis 
the city schools. But so we have this kind of incestuous little relationship mm-hmm. where nobody's real clear on how everything goes. But the double taxation is going both ways. Mm-hmm. And to be perfectly honest, both parties feel like they're victims mm-hmm. and everybody feels like they're getting overtaxed. I don't, I don't disagree with the overtaxed part. <clears throat> the way that they're going about it, I think, is difficult. But when Memphis decided to set up a special school district a long, long time ago, and they, they made their own charter saying that they were going to form a special school district, and, it, I mean, this is 100 years 100 ago, years ago yeah. and, um, and, it, and you can tell it in the language of the charter. It's, mm-hmm. it, you know, some of it just needed to have been amended. But this was supposed to be so that Memphis would have its own school district. They could educate their own kids, and they were going to contribute. There's maintenance money which right now is about $78 million that Memphis pays into their school district. Shelby County does most of the supporting of all the schools because $78 million doesn't even begin to touch Mm -hmm. the the city school budget. So um, Memphis, you know, uh, contributes that $78 million. If you remember, the city council, the city's in bad shape financially, Mm -hmm. and the city council was looking for ways to do better with their money, and I think there there was a general frustration that the Memphis City Schools to have all this money and we don't seem to be getting the results in the kids. And so the city council, for whatever reasons of their own, decided to withhold the $78 million. And there was a big court battle mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the city lost. So they're in the position right now where um, they're going to have to pay back however many years of the $78 million they didn't pay. Mm-hmm. And they um, are going to have to continue, if the Memphis City Schools stay as they are, they're going to continue to pay that $78 million. I do think that Chris is exactly right. This is mostly about the money, and I think it's fairly cynical um, because they don't want to pay it back, and they don't want to continue to fund. And unfortunately, these are real kids with mm-hmm. real lives. And, you know, trying to do this in the middle of a school year is, I think, irresponsible. Mm-hmm. Um, try, you know, what, what they're going to dump on our laps is potentially – us having to form a whole new school district for 150,000 kids in the middle of a school year. I'm a former teacher. That's it's irresponsible. It's not going to work. Let me let me mention real quick that under because people have been saying, Chris, why would we as in the county have to educate children in the city because they're in the county? Mm-hmm. And under state law, the county government is in charge of edu- educating all the children. But as Heidi said, the Memphis City had their own special school district, so that did away with that. But if the vote to surrender the charter passes <clears throat> in March, then basically, because there's no plan, and we can talk about that, the county commission is in charge of, and the county school board for now is in charge of educating all of those children. Now, that's where we get back to there's no plan, and we can, I've got, as you see, I've got notes and notes and notes of questions and comments, but... So anyway, that's something, and then I'll get into the the lack of planning and the fact that other school districts that they keep comparing us to, Hamilton County and Davidson mm-hmm. County, they had plans, okay? And, and one of the things that um, I heard the other night that I wanted to ask you about related to that is that um, – Chattanooga and Nashville, one of the things that they said strongly is that they had across the board agreement that this is what they wanted to do. Exactly. And we don't have that. Well, how I mean, many Chris, students were they were they even well, talking I, about? I, I think there's only about 40,000 in Hamilton. And that's aren't a there? whole lot we're different than 150,000. Yes, but even at right. that, everybody in those school districts were in agreement that they wanted to consolidate. So, But we don't <clears> have that. And, no. and Chris, I'm going to tell you, this is something that's really bothered me. We finally got uh, people in the leadership and the mayor's positions that we trust or somewhat trust. And as long as I can remember, we have said, okay, it's it, as a citizen, okay, don't mind consolidating some of the city government, but don't touch the schools. And then the first thing that happens is school consolidation. Right. And well, we have to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to continue with Chris Thomas and Heidi Schaefer about what is going on with this um, surrendering a school charter, what that means, what the consequences might be, and where do we go from here. So y'all stay with us, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back to For Life and Liberty. I'm Sue Parker here with Karen McNeil this afternoon, and we are talking with Chris Thomas and Heidi Schaefer, and we're so grateful that y'all are here with us today because um, we felt kind of 
uh, bewildered by a lot of talk that's been going on in the Memphis City School surrendering the charter, uh, not knowing exactly where that originally came from, how that is working out in the the system today. And as Chris, as you mentioned before, there is no plan. Uh, Karen mentioned before the break that other school systems, uh, Nashville and uh, Chattanooga, have you know, done the same thing, but they had a plan and they were in agreement. Their citizens were in agreement. The Shelby County citizens are not in agreement. No, this is like a hostile takeover. Uh, or I don't know where it was said, a shotgun wedding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Claudia Barr said that. Yeah, and uh, I guess my Hamilton County had, I think their agreement was three years to plan. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Davidson County took Someone told me from Nashville that I talked to that was involved in that like 15 years to transition Mm. everything. Oh, my goodness. And they're trying to do – Memphis is trying to do this in the middle of a school year with, as Heidi said, 150,000 students who are trying to learn – trying to get on top of of what their education even means to them. And uh, some of those students, honestly, Heidi, they have – they're kind of on their own. There's a lack of, of maybe the support that they need. Well, let me let me jump back and finish something real quick. And I want to tell you about Hamilton County has, I forget how many years ago that happened. Fourteen. But, okay. But their report card from the school, from the state education or uh, whatever. You know, that, I, I'm sorry, that was Chattanooga. That wasn't Davidson County. Well, but now, is uh, straight C's mm-hmm. and Nashville is straight D's. Mm-hmm. But they said if it weren't for the floods, the state would have taken them over. Now, is that what we want? No. Now, straight oh C's goodness. would be great for Memphis yes. City Schools, but uh-huh. for Shelby County Schools, which is straight A's, it mm-hmm. wouldn't. But as far as the plan goes, let me give you an analogy. If you've got a very, if you're a business owner or you're a big corporation, okay, and you have a business that's running great, leadership's great, not perfect, but profits are right. good, you're keeping costs down, everything's going well, and then you've got this other business over here that's by all standards not doing very well. Okay, it's not really the employee's fault. It's more of some other issues out there, parental involvement and some of that stuff. But what we're going to do, how does this sound? We're going to take the leadership from that large company and we're going to move them over here to the smaller company that's doing great. And we're going to put them in charge and let them run it. But we're not going to plan. We're just going to start March 1st. Here's what's going to happen. Mm. Heidi, does that that sound like a good plan to you? Uh, Under no circumstances. (laughs) (laughs) You know, um, I've often heard people compare the Memphis situation to the Nashville situation. And it's it's not really analogous because, you know, Nashville did want to consolidate lots of things. But their schools then went just, I mean, they plummeted. And so, you know, you had more flight out to Franklin. And Mm -hmm. it's what I think the bottom issue is that, the community has lost faith in the Memphis City mm-hmm. Schools. They've lost confidence that the Memphis City Schools are going to be able to educate kids correctly. So we need to fix that. But I don't think the way to fix it is to make everybody equally miserable. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that the remedy to the situation is to try to do a one-size-fits-all. Absolutely. And I'm going I'm to say this as a former teacher. <clears throat> when, when kids come into the classroom, they come with different amounts of learning and they come with different amounts of background. When I was teaching kindergarten, I taught at Christ the King Lutheran, and I had a girlfriend um, who taught at one of the city schools down on one of the state streets, I believe. And we would compare, you know, what our kids were coming in with. My kids were coming in, all of them knowing their alphabet almost all the way, their numbers, their colors. Um, Some of them already knew how to read, you know, so they're coming in with that skill set. Her kids were coming in not knowing any of that, knowing some some street smarts, Mm -hmm. but they didn't even know how to address her properly. You just can't assume that if you're going to, that if you give everybody the same curriculum, that you're going to be able to teach Mm -hmm. them all. You're either going to totally leave behind the the kids who don't know this stuff, or you're going to totally bore the kids who already know how to do the other. And that's what the Memphis City School Board's plan is that's supposed to be this big turnaround plan, is to have everybody in the whole school system on the same curriculum. That's that's a failed method. And what I think the lesson in this is that let's not make everybody equally miserable. I think Memphis City Schools would do well to um, find a way to come into about five or six smaller districts where they can tailor the curriculum to educate the kids in that community the way that those kids need to be educated and then have benchmarks. You know, after three Mm -hmm. years, we expect, I don't care how you get there, but we expect all the kids to know this as basic skills. At the next three years, here are your benchmarks. 
and then let the, let the parents but, and the kids and the administrators work it but out. But Heidi, I, you know, that leads me to a thought that I had from the, the debate that I saw the other night. And I was so frustrated because Representative Hardaway, or, or Mayor Goldsworthy, said that, mentioned that parental involvement is a problem. We all know parental involvement is a problem, especially in the Memphis City school system. And Representative Hardaway shut her down by saying she was insulting people. And she then what did she do? Instead of saying, look, we all know it's a problem. Let's address it, which is what we should do as a city. And we never do it. We will not look at what our problems are. We get shut down when we say that we have this problem when it involves a, a certain uh, group of people, and then we won't face it, and that's what I saw in that whole debate. In that whole debate, is we would not look at the problems. Well, it was a thug mentality. <laughs> it I'm just was be, be blunt about it, and 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 the I think uh, Commissioner Jones said they asked. I mean, even one of the moderators said, "Where's your plan? Why aren't you planning?" He said, "It's not our problem." He said, "The yeah. state law says it's a Shelby County's responsibility to educate these children." Because David Pickler said, "You threw your keys on the ground yes. or the table and walked away." And he said, "Well, no, it's not our responsibility. It's your, your responsibility. responsibility." But here's my deal: if you care about those children, then why don't you say, "Tell you what, like the county schools offered, let's all take a step back and yeah. let's take the next three years and plan." But I want to tell you that in Hamilton County, the failing schools before the merger are still failing schools today, and the high-performing schools are still high-performing. How is it, Chris, that Memphis thinks it's going to do this work so much better than those schools in smaller communities with smaller numbers of students who have uh, both groups in agreement think that they're going to do this. I just don't get it. We we really honestly don't do <clears throat> hardly anything better. Go ahead, Heidi. Well, um, actually, I think that there is, you know how I said that I think that the communities lost confidence in yes. the Memphis City Schools. And let me be clear, that's not because we have terrible teachers in the Memphis City Schools. We have some fine teachers. Yes. We have some fine administrators. But I think it's too big to be manageable. And I think that some of the decision makers and the historic decision makers have just made poor decisions. And I think it's just at a point where it just needs to get restructured. But... I don't really think that people, I think they just want to quit thinking about it. I've had some very intelligent folks who live in the city who are just like, well, you know, we just need to consolidate it and get it over with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm like, okay, but how is that going to help? How is that going to help with taxes? It's not. How is it going to help with the education level? It's not. And when I point out those factual things to them, they're like, well, I don't know, but we've got to do mm -hmm. something. And folks are so disenchanted and they know that we need to do better by the kids. But the answers are hard and tough, and people are just hoping that an easy fix w will take care of it. And I think that's what everybody's going for. Instead of doing the good, hard work yes, that we need to absolutely. do, they're going for the easy fix. And that's not fair. That's not right. Well, let me mention taxes. In Hamilton County and Davidson County, not only did they not go down, they went up. Mm -hmm. And so that's something to keep in mind. My plan, which I haven't proposed, I have just keep talking about it is to leave the Shelby County Schools alone, like I would that good business that's mm -hmm. running there, Yes, and take the Memphis City Schools, and like Heidi's talking about, divide it into maybe four smaller school systems. Mm -hmm. Look, over in some small counties in Arkansas, they have five school systems. Yeah. Yes. So that's there. what I'm talking about is, is, like you're saying, focus on this geographical area. What are the needs there? Let's focus on that. And, yes, I know that the county is responsible for educating those children. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I'm saying let's leave something that's working mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. alone and go from there. There are a lot of questions, and we might have to come back again because yeah. there's so many questions out there about this thing that we can't even answer in the time we have. You know, as I was looking at this, I, a question that I had – uh-oh. <laughs> We're going to run out of time. Uh -oh. A question that I have had all along is why do people, why do these uh, leaders think that bigger is better? And something clicked for me, and it was that they have more flexibility in spending the money when they're big. That's in other words, they don't have accountability for the way they spend the money. All right, hang on just exactly a second. Right. We're <laughs> going to take uh, another break, and then when we come back, we're going to try to tie this all up and put a big bow on it, and everything will change next week. Oh, so wonderful. we'll have to do this all over again. So y'all stay with us. We'll be back with Chris Thomas and Heidi Schaefer in just a minute. Welcome back to For Life and Liberty. I'm Sue Parker here with Karen McNeil, and we have got Chris Thomas and Heidi Schaefer with us. 
uh, this afternoon, and we have been talking about the surrender of the charter of the Memphis City Schools. And I will tell you, Karen made this comment when we were on break that that this has been a wonderful conversation because we've had two like-minded people talking about it where there isn't the the posturing and the arguing mm-hmm. and all that. This has been an intelligent thoughtful process and Chris has got a whole page of questions that we haven't even started so we're going to tell you right now uh, a couple of things we're going to come back together uh, and do another program on this and talk about some of those things like how much would this cost and and what's the plan what's the plan there is no plan at this point but um, we we just want to continue to talk about this this is an important decision for the citizens of Shelby County to make And so um, let's pick up where we were off. I think I kind of shut everybody down when we went to break. Well, one of the one of I need you to correct something in my thinking. And I think other people may have thought this as well. I, I thought that the reason David Pickler did what he did was because we can have over the years, it felt like that Memphis, especially the recent years, it felt like Memphis City Schools kept threatening the county. Okay, well, we're just going to surrender our charter. We're just going to surrender our charter. And that maybe then David Pickler, as a preemptive move, said, well, okay, surrender your charter. Is that Well, correct? that had been thrown out. That had been thrown out over the years. That but may Heidi have just been have. my cynicalness. <laughs> well, um, I, I think there's an element of truth to that. And, um, you know, it was just never an issue when the other side was in control of the state government. And I think right. it was just a lot of fear when the <laughs> conservatives took over. The Republicans were hoping they're conservatives. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, which is often the case. People get very afraid and they react. But I think that the other side has done a, an amazing in a, in a negative way job of demonizing David Pickler on this mm-hmm. because this, this really was not a reaction to what David Pickler was doing. He had offered a three-year stand down to plan and negotiate, and they, they said, no, 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 we've, we've got to yield the charter up. We've got to yield the charter up. I think that this was um, an end end run because they didn't get the consolidation move. I totally and, um, agree, Heidi, and, and, and they I think don't think that, anybody talks yeah, about that. And, and I think that it's because they thought, well, if they won't consolidate this way and because they don't want the schools to merge, mm-hmm. then we're going to make the schools merge, and then the governments will fall yes. into place. And so I, I think David Pickler um, acted in good faith, and I think there's, you know, on both sides, there's always going to be disagreement. But I don't think this is because David Pickler acted unwisely. He was offering a three-year stand down, yeah. and they used it as an excuse. Let me cover a couple things. Uh, one is people are asking why, in my district, which is everything outside of Memphis, why right. are we not getting a vote when mm-hmm. we're paying taxes, and it is going to affect our kids. Right. Well, the right now they've had opinions that say that under the state law, only the city that only the school system giving up its charter has a right to vote. And but, that's a state law. Correct. Okay. And a, some judge or some election state coordinator said that too. There is a bill going to be introduced by Senator Norris that they're trying to get passed that would allow those of us outside the city to have a say in that. Okay. And um, but I want to say. One thing we're dealing with on the county commission that has to happen, these are some things. We've got to do redistricting. We don't even know what redistricting would look like because we don't know what our school board would look like. Uh, that was one thing I want to admit. I want to tell you what some of the, what the cities outside of Memphis are looking at. They're looking at forming their own school system in Bartlett, Germantown, Collierville, to where can it would this, be. Let me ask you, can this happen in, in the time. midst of all this? Can well, this well, no, happen? they're going to have to get state law changed. And, I mean, they're going to get through. If this passes, they're going to finish out this school year for sure. That's yeah. already been said. But the question is, what happens over the summer? And so they are trying to get some legislation passed to, a couple things, allow um, special school district or allow the voters outside the city to vote and allow the citizen of the cities like Bartlett and all those areas to form their own school system. That can happen this legislative session. Mm which would mean going forward it could happen. Um, let me point out a couple of things. None of the current issues now facing Memphis City Schools are going to go away. Yeah. I mean, just because you surrender your charter doesn't mean those issues of poverty and bad curriculum, if you think. And I've heard from some teachers that some of the curriculum they're having to teach is not really doing much. And we do know bigger's not better. I was on the school board, as you know, for five, four years back in the early 90s. And every, what I saw around the country is the larger school systems spend more money per pupil. Yeah. And the test scores are lower. 
So that's the better school systems are the smaller school systems. Chris, does does ex, does what happens in other communities not have any kind of an impact on the citizens of of Shelby County? Do do we not take a a cue from other cities and see what's happened there and make a different plan? I, Heidi and I keep going back to creating these school zones, these school regions, districts, whatever you want to call them, to me, because in a neighborhood, I think you kind of have the same problems that happen, and why not just address them, right, Heidi? Well, I, I agree, and uh, this is an old an old plan that I believe that Wyatt Bunker's dad had put on mm-hmm. when he was on the school board, and that is to um, possibly make the schools more of a community school by having a, a police, having police precincts adjacent to the school, having the library, the public library also there, because then you're not duplicating the cost of having a library both places. Up at Northside High, they actually have a school library right next to Northside, and it works out great because, you know, it saves money that way. There are a lot of things we could do to make those schools really magnets for their community and try to rebuild the community, because nobody wants to talk about it, but what this really is, we can consolidate all day long, but what what to me this really is, it's a breakdown of a family. There's nobody raised and they're the kids because the moms are out working to try to put food on the table and the dads aren't there for whatever reasons. And until we can get the family strengthened, until we can find a way to intervene in that, these problems aren't going to go away. It's, it's, not, it's not because there's, you know, Shelby County has a different school district. It's not about that. It's about the families. Well, and like you said, the problems are not going to go away. We're going to continue to see these same problems, but they may even as you know, get worse. Well, uh, one thing that I heard Lucimba Gray say that impacted me was that um, there was um, there the the parents fund extracurricular activities in the um, county, and the state funds the extracurricular extracurricular activities in the city, and that would end for city schools well, if the, the county takes over. The and city schools, what would happen? well, I mean, there's a lot of money. I think I think the number is over $200 million that the, the resources going to the city schools would be lost mm-hmm. if, because it would be based on the county school system's numbers, mm-hmm. which would be higher, I mean, lower dollars. So that's something to look at. I just want to encourage everyone to look into this. I'm, I'm suggesting voting no so that everybody can go back to the drawing board right. and start planning. Mm. All right. Well, it has been a wonderful conversation. <laughs> Heidi, you wanted to say one last thing. Yeah, I did. I really am I'm imploring everybody to please put this on your daily prayer list because yes. this is something that's way bigger than us. And this could be an opportunity for us as a community to do what's right for yes. us, do what's mm-hmm. right for our kids. Um, but we're not going to just be able to overcome it on our own. It's going to take the power of God to do it. Absolutely. Excellent words. We have enjoyed being with y'all this afternoon. It's been absolutely great. So thank you for joining us. And we're going to come back. We're going to talk about this more next time on For Life and Liberty. (laughs) 